Welcome to this edition of the Prophetic Series. In this one, I'll be talking about 14 things every prophetic person must know, whether you're called as a prophet, apostle, or you're a pastor, evangelist, or a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, with prophetic awareness, or you are trying to know more about the prophetic, how God interacts with these people. Prophets, you know, are God's spokesmen. It connotes the activity of somebody who is placed in a position to hear God directly and uh, relate the same to the people of God or stand on behalf of God to speak or establish some things in the spirit realm that must affect the physical. More than ever, God is interested in mankind. That's to say that in view of the fact that his concern from the beginning is to have men in the place of the chiefest of all of his creatures. He has picked the prophetic faculty and hence the prophets and the tool prophecy to use or engage to reach out to his people to or give them the desired shape. The word says, train up a child in a way you should go so that he will not uh, depart from it. God uses prophets to train his people or train humanity to go in his direction so they remain forever. His voice, so long as the earth uh, remains. And there are things that every prophetic person must know in order to be effective as a prophet, in order to be able to handle the prophetic anointing in the best uh, order, that's to be a good steward of the prophetic anointing and hence apply it appropriately to mean heaven's gain on earth in terms of uh, winning more uh, people into God as well as maintaining those who are already in the faith, nurturing them. This may have to do with your techniques as well. So every prophetic person should know a number of things. Number one is the calling. Uh, on the calling, when you look at scripture, every prophetic person must know how God calls. Remember in the case of Samuel, the Bible said that before the light will go, down, uh-huh. go out in the temple, the young man, uh, Samuel was lying down in the temple and on the altar and uh, the Lord called out Samuel, Samuel. That was how God reached out to him. He had the voice. He ran to Eli. Eli couldn't hear, apparently. So it was a voice heard in an inner vision. So God called Samuel in an inner vision. God calls his people differently, like for Moses, by the mounting of the Lord. So how does he call? You need to be open to these. Perhaps you are yet to understand exactly how you were called. Also, you may have been called and are confused because your nature of calling or nature or mood or approach to accessing the call of God, or let me put it this way, the platform through which you received your calling from God may not look like the other person's one. So you are like confused. Did God really call me? So you need to know how God calls. Number two thing about the call is how to answer the call of God. You see, he calls, but you must answer before it will click before there's a connection between you and God and for the prophetic mission for which you have been called to. This is when and only when you can stand in to prophesy to God or in the place of God and be accurate when you do. How do I receive the call of God? For Moses, you got it? He had the call. He had to move immediately. For Abraham, God had said to Abraham. So he decided to move, obeying the voice of God in the direction that God led him to. For Joshua, he agreed to undertake their responsibility. But there are occasions where, like it's written in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, from verse 2 down, uh, write the vision down, yes. Make it plain that he may run that reads. The vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarries, wait for it, for it will not delay. It will surely speak in the end. There are occasions when God calls you now, prepares you, to send you out later. How do you answer? Will it mean that you have to relocate? Will it mean that you have to take on the uh, tax right where you are? Number three thing about the call is when to answer the call of God. Yes, there are occasions when he calls, you answer when to take off with the call. You have to give your attention to him. So he speaks to you. Some people start too early, like Gehazi. Let me borrow that injunction. He went out 
that morning when the Syrian army had ambushed him and his master, he saw everywhere was ambushed and he cried out, Alas, my Lord, the master. And his master said, They that are with us are more than they that be with them. And God, the man of God, Elijah, prayed and his eyes opened. That's in uh, Second Kings chapter 6 with chariots of fire. So indeed, they that were with him and Elisha were more than they that were with the Assyrians. There are occasions where as a young prophet or somebody who is coming into the prophetic go out too early. Like you want to start ministry, you want to start up your own church. Meanwhile, it's time for you to go under mentors, uh, fathers, or spiritual parents to be trained, to be brought up so that you can stand out and stand strong. The call can be there, but there is a way to answer the call. The fact that you customized to receive the call of God, there can be the occasion in which your body will naturally resonate uh, signals of that call when it is not yet time to answer. And you can answer too early. Sometime you will die as a casualty in the process because it's not the right time. Anything done outside the time appropriate for your mission with God, prophetic mission I mean, to roll out or be rolled out will eventually crash land or you will end up as a casualty. In the realm of the spirit, four prophets, we are faced with the voice of God, the voice of Satan, your voice. And there are occasions where he was still uh, battered with a voice of a man, let me add it up there, which can be influenced by the devil or from the man by themselves. So that's a fourth voice. You need to know where it is God that is actually Talking. Do you know that when I talk to you, maybe you're my spiritual son, when I talk to you, it could mean that God is asking me to ask you to do something for God at the time. I can come up and say that you go to social country and do something. So you need to be able to know when it is God talking through me as a person. Then how can I identify and isolate uh, the voice of God as a distinct pious entity from the voices that I hear in the realm of the spirit? There are occasions where your voice tend to battle to find place so that you begin to hear your voice talking to you. Every prophet must know this. When I was talking about uh, the issue of the call, I want you to also know where to answer the call. There are occasions where God calls you here, you answer elsewhere. <laughs> what I mean by this is the issue of location. I said voices, isolation of voices is the first uh, point there. Then we move to how does God talk to you as a person? Like in Numbers chapter 12, he said uh, to Aaron and Miriam that if there are prophets among you, I will talk to them in dreams and in dark scenes. But my servant Moses is not like that. I talk with him face to face as a man talks to his friend. Can you get that? Right? How he talks to Moses is different from how he talks to Raymond, how he talks to Jonathan, how he talks to the other prophet or prophetess, how he talks to Isaiah, how he talks to Ezekiel. There may be similarities, but God is a kind of customized himself to talk to you in a specific tone and way. So how does he talk to you? You are going to go through a series of prophetic tests to know exactly how God talks to you. Identify and isolate that approach to which he talks to you and then dwell on it as a process, his own a choice way of talking to you. How be it, we must bear in mind that God isn't pragmatic. So even when I know exactly how he talks to me, he may break the protocol and talk to me in a different way the other day or another day. That kind of readiness makes me to be ready for my own specific approach of God talking to me so I can catch the message anytime he uh, steps up to speak to me. Another point is what mission is God giving you and how does he want you to approach it, uh, the mission? Every prophetic person must come to uh, this point uh, where they are able to know exactly what he's sending them to do, how he wants them to do it. It is your ability to isolate this, take this out of yourself that positions you in a place where you can be right, correct, accurate, forensic when you prophesy. Deviation from this will make you flour, even when you're meant to be accurate. As a prophetic individual, prophets of old had called all their specific area, 
that God wanted them to uh, attack or tackle in the prophetic as well as how they were meant to tackle the specific missions. Another point is uniqueness of your battle. Every prophetic mission attracts her own battle and it's going to be very clear that your battle uh, kind of is going to be a unique one. It's customized for you and you are equal to the tax. God is going to stand by you and you are going to win the battle. Don't be afraid. God knows exactly what he has designed you to overcome. The uh, forces that the enemy would build against you can be as insurmountable as uh, mountain Everest. So every battle you face or you are faced with has got an expiry date. So as a prophet, take note of this. Don't panic, don't run. You are going to win over every unique battle that you come across. Let's refer to how God talks to you again. Now, when does he talk to you? It's a relevant issue. There are those that God talks to them uh, at different time of the day. Particularly when it comes to a prophecy that is meant to be cooled down by you for a later use. In general, there are atmosphere and time or moment of the day that encourages or enhance access to the voice of God, the prophetic anointing, the deliverance anointing, healing anointing for prophetic people. There is that moment that works more for everybody in the course of the day. You need to check out yourself a minute. Psalm 6 a.m. Psalm is, uh, let's say 6 to 11 a.m., 12 noon thereof. Psalm is 5 p.m. down. Uh, usually, in most places where the temperature can be very high, afternoon is a very difficult moment to plunge into the prophetic, to tell what God has to say. So it may correspond with when he will not be obliged to speak with you. So if you're scheduling your uh, meetings or contacts or sessions, you skip that moment. because Also, your nature, depth, preparation before he speaks to you would count. So you need to check yourself out. How long do you wait on him before he speaks to you? Does he just speak to you all the time like he speaks to Moses? Sometimes you come to the presence of God and you have to wait for some hours. Uh, let's take uh, Jesus' encounter for instance. He laid down there from 6 a.m. so to say until docks. That's from dawn to docks. Then God spoke to him in the incidents of uh, the encounter between Israel and Ai. So if you're going to be like a Moses in a matter like this, he may not speak to you like he speaks to Moses. If it were to be Moses, there may be no need to lay down that long to get that information. So how he speaks to you is going to be different from how he speaks to other prophets. But you are going to as well exercise yourself between all. <laughs> Uh, the known uh, parameters or platforms or uh, examples of how God speaks to people, biblical and contemporary, to see whether you fit into any of these categories of personal, uh, mutual moment with God in which he speaks to you. So you need to know that. Another point you need to take note of as a prophet is how to eat. Yes, God is going to customize your diet. Even the diet of the Lord Jesus was customized. So your diet uh, can be customized. The young man, John the baptizer, had a customized diet. He ate honey and locust. So it's very much possible that the Spirit of God will limit you or restrict you to some kind of food. Remember people like Samson and so on. So it's very much possible you're restricted, but don't put any restriction on yourself that the Spirit of God hasn't placed on you. That's not what I'm saying here. Another point to look at is how he impress on you the burden to pray. These can be unique for prophets, but in general, when you begin to sense a heavy heart, it's time to pray. That's a prophetic person. Sometimes you just had nothing has gone wrong, but you just have the kind of uh, disturbance deep within you. It's time to pray. He's going to talk to you. That's what he's doing. So there are uh, signals that God gives to you as a prophetic person for some persons. Uh, you may come to a point in the night as you're sleeping and uh, somebody will just tap you. Or you hear a voice calling you. Sometimes the voice is not necessarily saying, wake up and pray. The person will tap you, you may not even see. 
but it's time to pray. So you're just aroused to go into prayers. There are these uh, things that happen. You're living in a world that is spiritual. Your body here is physical, but you are a spiritual entity the moment God makes you a prophet or a prophetic person. So you begin to experience life in the other realm, in the spirit realm. In fact, the more conscious you are about the spiritual realm, the easier it is for you to hack into the spirit realm. Next, the easier it becomes for you to be able to operate prophetically and be accurate. The goal is to be a mutual friend of God as a prophet, like a father Abraham. Next, to be able to pass the message of God across to his people, undiluted, without mistakes, without flaws. And next, is to be able to convey the power that brings solution to people's immediate problems and the long-term problem, like the prophets of old. Eventually, you are meant to herald the return of the Lord as a prophet. So taking note of these parameters positions you as a prophetic individual to come back with great exploits. God bless you. I pray that the Lord arouse your consciousness as a prophetic person. To take note of everything there is that you are supposed to take note of and that will place you in the condition or position that you do the prophetic with inimitable or uh, accuracy and at a forensic depth as you prophesy in the name of jesus christ may the devil and the hordes of hell not be able to if you bound in jesus mighty name the release to make god proud as you toy and labor with christ in the faith in jesus awesome name of prayer